Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your will. And we thank you for your way. Father, anoint the ground of mouth. Father, anoint the sword of seed. Father, anoint the sower. Hide her in the gift that you've given to your body so that we will receive a life-changing, destiny-accelerating revelation of you through your word, by your spirit. We pray expecting because it's under your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Give God a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord God. I just thank God and praise God. For I want to get into uh, our lesson, kind of kind of go back a little bit. We're talking about thankfulness, gratefulness, having an attitude of gratitude. This is the third week. And we know the scripture that we used before was Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. And we talked about the 10 lepers. We talked about the significance of being thankful because, again, going into 2019, we need to begin to have an attitude now that says, I'm grateful for what you've done, but I'm also for grateful. Grateful, grateful for what you're going to do. You heard Minister Wanda say earlier today, she used the scripture in Proverbs 31, where the wise woman there specifically smiled at her future. And she was able to smile at her future and be thankful about what is to come, having not even seen what is to come, being thankful in advance because she was settled in the things of God. You have to determine now not to wait until next year happens and then thank them as things go along. That's great. But you need to do like the woman in Proverbs 31 did, which is right now start smiling about 2019. Right now, start smiling about 2019. Now, you would say, you know what, Dr. C, I don't I mean, how do in the world do I know uh, how to smile about 2019? I don't even know what's going to occur in 2019. I don't even know what's going to happen in 2019. I don't know what 2019 is going to throw at me. It was so many crazy stuff, things thrown at me this year or the years before. How can I begin to smile about 2019? All I know is it doesn't tell you how. It just says do it. It just says do it. It just says do it. And so I know that the Bible is very clear. God is an omniscient God. He's all-knowing. He knows, he knows the end before the beginning. He sets the end before the beginning. He knows exactly what's going to take place next year. But I guarantee you, if you set your heart to begin to smile, because your heart's got to smile before it comes out of your mouth. See, it's got, to go, it's got to be in your heart first before it comes out of your mouth. If you set yourself to begin to smile now for what God is getting ready to do in 2019, imagine the, imagine the level of blessing and the fulfillment that will come to you as a result of you being thankful for it in advance. It's kind of like when you have children, right? And, uh, and you have children and all they do is frown and pout and frown and pout and complain and frown and pout. And they come in front of you and they frown and pout. Do, do you, are you excited to see them when they do all that? No, I don't think so. You know, when they, they come to you and they frown and they pout and then they, they complain and they got to tattle and they got to tell on this one and tell on that one and, you know, go through all of these different drama, all these different types of drama. When our child comes to us like that, you know, on the inside, you, you want to say, look, why don't you go sit down and get yourself together? Why don't you go get yourself together and then we'll have a conversation? Well, we're like that to God. We come and we complain and this happened and that happened and my bill is due and then this and then that. And the other guy's like, go sit down. <laughs> go sit down. Get the Bible. Get in your word. Stop complaining. But then you got the child that's all in your face and they're smiling and they're happy. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. Thank you. They're just thanking you and they're happy. They're always smiling. When you see that child, you want to pick them up and hug them and twirl them around and give them a kiss on the cheek. You're trying to figure out how you can do stuff for them. Well, God is the same way. So why not come in his presence and thank him in advance for what he has not already done for you? He will be finding things to do for you. He will be going out of his way to make sure that he brings the past because he doesn't have to sit you down to go get you together first. Right? He doesn't have to sit you down to get you together first because you've already gotten yourself together. I'd rather get myself together than God make me get myself together. Right? So I, I got to get into a position now where I have an attitude of gratitude. But Dr. C, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've experienced. You don't know what, you know, what has come my way. You don't understand the things I'm going through. Well, I know that the Bible does not tell us all the things a woman in Proverbs 31 went through, but it does say that she smiled at her future anyway. Amen. She smiled. Now, there's nobody on this planet that was ever born into a situation that was perfect. 
and nobody on this planet was ever born into a situation where there was not some sort of travail then there's not some sort of affliction because the Bible's clear. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. There was a righteous woman. She had some afflictions. We may not have seen them all there on the page. We may see all of the triumphs because God says he always causes us to triumph. We see all of our triumphs there. But one of the things we do see, which may be a very strong key to her being triumphant, is the fact that she was grateful. She was grateful. She looked in advance. She didn't worry about what she couldn't do, what she didn't have, what wasn't brought to her, where she wasn't born, who wasn't helping her. She did not focus on those things, but instead she chose to give thanks to a God that loved her. God is so clear. He's so clear. He says, look, let me help you understand something. The world calls it being optimistic. Just being positive for the sake of being positive. That doesn't work. Being positive for the sake of being positive, you know, just kind of like you have no brain, just walking around smiling, just, you know, just kind of stupid, right? That, that's the world. We have a reason to thank God. We have a reason to be happy. We have a reason to smile. We have a reason, and that reason is God. Not a one of us would be in here, not a one of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Not a one of us would be here if it wasn't for him. So if you can't feel like you can't think of something to thank God for, you need to thank him because you're not in prison right now. You need to thank him because you're not in a, in a crack house right now. You need to thank him because you're not, you're not in a situation where, you know, you're, 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 I, I, I keep seeing in my mind people that go to a place, and I see it so many times on the street, where people go to a place where they're at the point of no return. And you have to thank God that you're not at that place. You may have made some dumb decisions. You may have done some stupid things. You may be $600,000 in debt, but you are not at the point of no return. You are not at the point of no return. No matter how bad it is, no matter how bad it's been, you are not at the point of no return. You've got to come to a place where you begin to thank him now for what he did. And again, start now the attitude of gratitude for 2019. Why is it important? It's important because we see in the scripture with the 10 lepers that one of them, only one out of the 10 came back, stopped long enough to turn to Jesus and tell him, thank you for what he has done. And as a result, the Bible is very clear. It says that not only did he, did he heal him like he healed the other nine, but the Bible says that he made him whole, which indicates that the other nine were not made whole like the one was in, that was made whole because he turned and he turned toward God, gave God glory, and he also thanked him. We have to determine right now, right now, that you're going to be the one. Right now, determine right now, you are going to be the one that turns and gives thanks to God. Why is it so important? Well, let me tell you, it's important because how many of you are expecting God to do great and mighty things in, in 2019? We're expecting a continuation of acquisition, but we're also believing God to add on, to pile on that, the things that he has for us going forward in 2019. Amen? And so we can't... We can't allow ourselves to stop, to stop, and to halt because we've not given thanks to God. Again, when I think of, you know, I think about the smile in the heart and how the smile has to start in the heart. The thankfulness has got to start in the heart. And I think about the fact that, you know, when you have, again, I, I think of children when I think of this. You see children and, uh, and you know, they act up, they wail and they flail, they kick and they're screaming, they're fussing and they're, you know, fighting and they're trying to resist. But as soon as you do something, have you seen that child? Tears can be coming down, but somehow you can make that child smile and they try their best not to smile because they don't want to smile because they're they got the drama going on with the tears. And if they smile, then they'll mess up their whole act. And so, you know, you, you can see them and they're trying to hold that smile back so strong in the middle of the tears because they love the drama that they're putting on for you. But they just can't help it. A little smile comes through. You have to determine that no matter how difficult it is, no matter how difficult the situation is, no matter what has been done or said to you, that in the midst of it, no matter how hard it gets, that you're going to allow that smile to come through, pressing through to the floor forefront because you know that God is not a man that he should lie. He never will leave you. He never will forsake you. And he's promised you so many good and precious promises. And there's nothing, nothing the Bible says that he will withhold for those who walk uprightly. If, if I can sit here and believe the word of God for what it actually says and no one understand that there's no good thing. No good thing that God will withhold for those who walk brightly. If you get that down on the inside, you won't be worrying about if you're adequate or not. Or if you deserve it or not. Or what do I need to do to get this or not? No. If I am, my righteousness is in him, there's nothing good that he will withhold. Right. Nothing good that he will withhold. Not a good, not a, not a one thing. Not a one thing. What's a good thing that, what's a good thing that you believe in God for? 
What's a great thing you're believing God for? God says, I'm not going to withhold that from you. You walk up rightly. I'm not withholding houses from you. I'm not withholding lands from you. I'm not withholding children from you. I'm not withholding a spouse from you. I'm not withholding those things. That's not what's keeping you from having these things. It's not me. Amen. He said, I'm not withholding any good thing. It's not me. So what's holding it? What's preventing it from coming forward? What's preventing the manifest? You haven't thanked them enough. You haven't thanked him in advance for what he hasn't yet brought yet. See, if we stop complaining about she's not perfect enough, he's not perfect enough, you know, we don't get along. We don't, if you focus so much on the negative, you, you brought so much negative attention to yourself and pushed yourself away from glorifying God, then you get in a position where you're in your head, you're expecting God to do something, but you have not set up a spiritual atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to want to come and do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to do a thing. You know, the atmosphere around it is stinky. Because you got so much frustration, you got so much anger, you got so much bitterness, you got so much, com so much complaining going around, so many toxic emotions that you've grieved the Holy Spirit from bringing to you what he wants to bring to you. Do you think the angels want to approach you in your nastiness? Do you think the angels, they're coming, you know, they're coming with that whole boatload of stuff to bless you because the Lord has instructed them to bring some things. And here you are just a complaining and a complaining and a complaining and a complaining. And you can't find joy. You can't find happiness. You can't find peace. And they're sitting there waiting for, go, go, have, go and have a seat and get yourself together. <laughs> get yourself together. Get yourself together. And once you get yourself together and we hear from God, we can give you this stuff. But you've got to get yourself together. Sometimes we take 10 years getting ourselves together. We take five years getting our stuff together. We take two years getting our stuff together. Determine that in 2019, you're going to get yourself together in 2018 for 2019. Just determine that in advance. Determine in advance you're going to have a permanent smile in your heart about your future. Yeah, you're going to have a permanent smile in your heart. I know things aren't easy. I know things aren't easy. But we're not focused on what's, what it is. The Bible says, call those things that be not as though they were. Yes, I see that this is a difficult situation. Yes, I see that there's hardship here. Yes, I see that there's an affliction here. I'm not denying what I see. But what I'm saying is what I see in the spirit is more real than what I see in the natural. And because of that, I'm not going to focus myself on the natural, but I'm going to focus myself on the... Can you imagine if Jesus, the Bible says he, you know, when he uh, was in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember, he got into a place where he was just, you know, he was so intensely moved by what he had to do and what was in front of him that the Bible says he sweat so much that it was like blood coming from his pores. And then he says, my, you know, then he says, look, you know what, if, if there's another way that I can do this, you know, let this cup pass for me, let me do it another way. And obviously there was not that was the way that God had chosen but the Bible says it was for the cross on the it was the cross but it was for the glory on the other side of that that he endured the cross he was able to be in the position of being I can't even imagine him in the garden knowing that he was getting ready to carry the sins of the world on his shoulders he was going to have to go to hell and snatch the keys from Satan he knew all of these things he was going to have to go and do for us right now and for all of eternity can you imagine the, the weight that was on him at that time that's why he was sweating so hard that it was like blood coming from his pores and you imagine at that time the Bible says that he determined he was not going to set his eyes on yet anymore what he had to do he was going to set his eyes on being thankful and seeing what was on the other side of what he was going through and had to go through. You have to, I use a term and I've said it, said it for many, many years. You have to see yourself on the other side. And when you see yourself on the other side, like Jesus did, he knew he had to go through all that he had to go through. But when he saw the glory on the other side, he was able to endure what he endured. If you will now see yourself on the other side, you will see yourself in 2019 happily married. You will see yourself in 2019 with a full family. You will see yourself in 2019 with your debts canceled or your debts further along than they were this year. You will see yourself in 2019 healthier than you've ever been before if you see yourself in 2019 in all of these ways and begin to thank God for it now begin to smile about it now can you imagine you're you're all you're saying you know what I know that I'm going to have to endure some stuff I know I'm going to have to go through some things to get there but I'm going to thank God in advance for it and that allows the trip to be that much easier Allows the journey to be that much easier. So important. It's so important. So here are four things we can thank him for. 
Four things we can thank him for. Now, you know, the world is all about optimism, like I said, about, you know, positivity and optimism. All right? And so that's great. That's wonderful. So they have, you know, here are, here are ten things to be grateful for. Or, you know, have a gratitude calendar. and Thank God each day, every day for 30 days. All those things are great. If you need to do that, do that by all means. But here's just four simple things that the Word talks about. Number one, we need to do is we need to thank God specifically for his goodness. That's it. Real simple. Don't have to make a difference. Just thank God because he's good. Just thank him because he's good. That he's a God that does not lie. He's a God that does not manipulate and control. He's a good God. He's a God above gods. He's a, a God above little G gods. I mean, the little G gods that don't heal. And the little G gods that don't care about people. And the little G gods that put women down. And the little G gods that don't care about family. The little G gods that are here on this earth that care more about people than about, more, more about uh, things than about people. The little G gods. God is a God above everything. God. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. Thank him because he's good. Because he's a benevolent God. He's a God that says when you wake up in the morning, the mercies are new every single day. He did not have to be a God to give you a new relief. Mercy is relief. He did not have to be a God to give you new relief every day to be able to relieve you from some of the pressures or all of the pressures that you're dealing with on a regular basis. You've got to wake up and thank him. Don't allow the enemy to put you in a position where you wallow in depression, wallow in what you can't have, don't have, won't have, couldn't do, won't do, somebody else didn't do. Don't wallow in that. Determine that in advance. I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be thankful because God is a good God. You did not have to walk in here on your two feet. You absolutely did not. You did not have to wake up this morning. You absolutely did not have to breathe as clearly as you're breathing right now. Anybody who's ever had an ailment knows that you're extremely excited when you are able to get full use of that thing that wasn't working properly. And so you got to wake up and say, you know what? I serve a good God, a God that wants me whole, a God that says healing is the children's bread. He said, not just bread, the kids' bread. So you got to wake up and you say, you know what? God is a good God. Psalm 136 and 1 says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. If there's anything I can thank God for is the fact that he is a good God and his loving kindness, he will love me until I see him. He will love me until I see him. But I don't feel like he loves me. It's not a feeling. Amen. That's an elementary teaching. That is a, that is a fleshly thing. That's a worldly thing. We think that we associate love with an emotion. Love is not an emotion. It's an action. Love is a verb. You can tell me all day you love me. If you don't show me, I don't see it. Amen. Right? But God so loved the world that he gave. That he gave. He loved and he gave. We see love. We don't just hear love. We see love. Right? So we thank God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. So we got to thank God for his goodness. Number two, we got to thank God for the local church. We got to thank God for DWC. Amen. Amen. We got to thank God for the local church. Local church. You know, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 5 through 17. This was an instruction to the local church. It says, let the peace of God rule or peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. He said, look, be thankful for the one body. Be thankful for the communion. Be thankful for the community that is Detroit Worship Center. Be thankful for it because you know what? You could be confused right now. You could be confused right now in a place where you think the spirit of God is and it's nothing but witchcraft. You could be in a place where you think it's the spirit of God and it's a cult wrapped up in something else. So you got to thank God for where God has set you and where God has put you because there are people who have made wrong decisions. There are people who have made decisions that don't line up with the word of God. So I give glory to God that, Lord God, I thank you for putting me in this place. I thank you for allowing me not to be deceived by the enemy. I thank you that wherever you are and wherever your spirit is, there is liberty. I thank you, Lord God, that you're constantly moving in the lives of my sisters and brothers all around me. It's not one thing happening to one and one thing happening to another. We're not having little, you know, things popping up here and a couple things popping up here. God is doing things across the board. I said it long ago. I said it almost two years ago that the blessing shouldn't be with one. The blessing should not be individually only. It should also be corporately. It should be a corporate thing and God has proven proven in this body that it's a corporate blessing that's taking place. He has proven it time and time and time again. So we have to thank God for his local church BWC. So we thank God for his goodness. We thank God for the local church and then real simply we just need to thank God for everything. 
Just thank him for everything. Just don't let, just don't leave it out. When you wake up in the morning and you open up your mouth, I don't care how bad your breath smells. Just begin to thank God. Lord, I just thank you. He doesn't smell it. But Lord, I thank you. I give honor to you. I praise you. I adore you. Just begin to thank him for the day. Determine this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Determine that today is an amazing day. This week is an amazing week. Now, you know, again, the world, you can hear the enemy on your shoulder probably saying, well, you know, it just sounds like, you know, just positivity, you know, and it's just, I can't be that positive, you know, people in my family aren't that positive, they'll think I lost my mind walking around smiling all the time or walking around seeming like I'm happy all the time because I come from a people that never smile. I come from people that don't smile, they're not happy, they complain all the time. Do you want to be like them? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because you have a right to smile at your future. You have a right to wake up and determine that you're going to put off the things that may be on your bloodline and determine that you're going to go forward in the things of God. You're going to allow joy to overtake you. The Bible says, not, it says, rejoice in the Lord. And then he says, and again, I say rejoice. He's like, I don't want it to just happen one time. I want you to constantly be rejoicing. That means experiencing a revelation of joy in the Lord over and over and over and over and over again. That means your joy in the Lord should not stop. You shouldn't just be joyful for one day or two days. You should be able to say, you know what, wait a minute. The Bible says, count in all joy when I enter various temptations and trials and all these testings that come my way because I know that it's working some amazing things out in my life. That's the thankful attitude. No, you are not crazy if you're excited because crazy stuff is happening to you. No, what you're doing is the word. And you're going to get the results that the word talks about when you do what the word says. Very, very important. So you're going to thank God for his goodness. You're going to thank God for the local church. You're going to thank God for everything. And finally, we're going to just focus on this for a moment. You're going to thank God for his loving kindness. Right? You're going to thank God for his loving kindness. Psalm 106 says, praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Everlasting. I want to look at Psalm 107. And uh, as I read Psalm 107, I'm going to ask if you would just close your eyes as we kind of close. Psalm 107. I want you to close your eyes. And when you hear, this is a thankfulness psalm. I encourage you. I encourage you. Not only to adapt an attitude of gratitude. But I encourage you to determine you're going to be more grateful now than you've ever been before. And you're going to start it now. It's going to be permanent now. You have four and a half weeks. It only takes 21 days in general to form a habit. You're going to determine, you're going to form that now. You're going to be grateful in the things of God now. You're going to begin to understand that you thank him in everything. You thank him for the local church. You thank him for your family. You thank him, everything is everything. Amen. Thank him for his goodness. And then you're going to thank him for his loving kindness right now. As I read this, I'm going to read Psalm 107 in the Message Bible. When you hear yourself in it. Because you're going to hear yourself in it. When you hear yourself in it and you hear what God has done, I just want you to just break out into a thanks to the Lord. I'm going to read it now. Psalm 107. I encourage you to read it at home. The message. It says, oh, thank God. He's so good. His love never runs out. All of you set free by God, tell the world. Tell how he freed you from oppression then rounded you up from all over the place, from the four winds and the seven seas. Some of you wandered for years in the desert, looking but not finding a good place to live, half starved and parched with thirst, staggering and stumbling on the brink of exhaustion. Then, in your desperate condition, you called out to God. You got out, he got you out in the nick of time. He put your feet on a wonderful road that took you straight to a good place to live. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle mercy to the children he loves. He poured out great drafts of water down parched throats, and he starved, those who were starved, the hungry, they got plenty to eat. Some of you were locked in a dark cell, cruelly confined behind bars. You were in, you were in bondage, punished for defying God's word or for turning your back on the high God's counsel. A hard sentence and your heart so heavy and not a soul in sight to help. But then you called out to God in desperate condition and he got you out in the nick of time. He led you out of your dark, dark cell. He broke open the jail and led you out. So thank God for his marvelous love, 
for his miracle mercy to the children he loves. He shattered the heavy jailhouse doors and he snapped the prison bars like matchsticks. Some of you were sick because you'd lived a bad life and your bodies were feeling the effects of your sin and you couldn't even stand the sight of food. So miserable, you thought you'd be better off dead. Then you called out to God in your desperate condition and he got you out in the nick of time. He spoke a word that healed you, that pulled you back from the brink of death. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle mercy to the children he loves. Offer Thanksgiving sacrifices and tell the world what he's done. Sing it out. Some of you set sail in big ships. You were put to sea to do business in faraway ports. Out at sea, you saw God in action. You saw his breathtaking waves with the ocean. And with a word, he called up the wind, an ocean storm, and towering waves. You shot high in the sky, and then the bottom dropped out. Your hearts were stuck in your throats, and you were spun like a top. You reeled like a drunk, and you didn't even know which end was up. But then, you called out to God in your desperate condition. And he got you out again in the nick of time. He quieted the wind down to a whisper. He put a muzzle on all the big waves. And you were so glad when the storm died down and he led you back safely back to harbor. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle mercy to the children he loves. Lift high your praises when the people assemble. Shout hallelujah when we come together. God turned the rivers into wasteland and the springs of water into sun-baked mud. God turned luscious orchards and they became alkali flats because of the evil people who lived there. But then he changed the wasteland into pools of fresh water and it arid earth into springs of water. He brought in the hungry and settled them there. They moved in and what a great place to live. They sowed the fields and they planted harvests and they reaped a bountiful harvest and he blessed them and they prospered greatly. Their herds of cattle never decreased and abuse and evil and trouble began to decline and he heaped scorn on princes and sent them away he gave the poor a safe place to live he treated their clans like well cared for sheep good people see this and they are glad bad people are speechless stopped in their tracks if you're really really wise you'll think this over it's now time that you appreciated God's deep love let's give God glory let's stand to our feet Let's stand to our feet and give God glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for where you brought us from, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for where you brought us from, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've, Lord God, rescued us, Lord God, out of situations that were too dark to even discuss, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you, Lord God, that you've rescued us from shame, Lord God, and guilt, Lord God, and bitterness, Lord God. You've rescued us, Lord God, from situations, Lord God, that were just too much to talk about, Lord God. Father, we thank you, we praise you, Father God, that, Lord God, you changed our financial states, Lord God, and you've healed our physical bodies, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you brought our families back together again. And Father, we thank you that there's so much more to do. And we give you glory right now. We thank you right now for what you're doing in advance, Lord God. For Lord God, we know that the year is not over, Lord God, and yet another year is coming. And so Father, we know, Lord God, that Lord, as you begin to move in these next four and a half weeks, Father, we give you, Lord God, rule. We give you rule. We give you reign, Lord God, in our lives to do as you will, Lord God, to do as you please, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, from this point forward, Lord God, we will no longer be, Lord God, like the nine, Lord God, who didn't even look back to give thanks. But Father God, we will be like the one, Lord God, who looks, Lord God, sees his state, Lord God, understands what he's come out of, Lord God, knows that he can't come out of it if it hadn't been for you, Lord God, looks back, Lord God, and must fall to his face, Lord God, at your feet, Lord God, and begin to give you thanks. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for not just fixing, Lord God, that leper, but I thank you for transforming him, Lord God. And so, Father, we declare, Lord God, at this time, Lord God, at this time, at this time of year, Lord God, we choose, Lord God, to be the ones, Lord God, to fall at your feet, Lord God, to be the ones to say thank you, Lord God. And, Father, we receive, Lord God, no longer being fixed, but being transformed by your glory, by your power, by your impartation, Lord God, by your spirit, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Lord God, for what you are yet to do in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord God. 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 We
give you glory, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father God, we will not let the rocks cry out, Lord. We will not let them cry out because, Lord God, we know, Lord, that we can open up our mouths and thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While every eye is closed and every head is bowed, we don't want to take for granted that there's someone in here that doesn't need to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so right now, if you've not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you desire to, we want you to just simply raise your hand and we'll pray a prayer of salvation with you. Or there might be someone here where you have already given your life to the Lord, but you really need to rededicate your life. You need to draw closer to, to him. The Bible's clear. It says, you know what? You draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. You can't hear God. He sounds like he's afar off. He's at a distance. Rededicate your life to the Lord and determine that you're going to make a deeper commitment. You're going to have a diff- different sense of loyalty to him. He's not going to be your last resort. He's going to be your only resort. And I guarantee you that God will do great and mighty things in your life. So if that's you, you've never received Jesus as your Lord before, or you want to you want to rededicate your life, if you just raise your hand now so we can recognize you. If that's you, we want to simply pray a prayer. Amen. I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else who says, you know what? I want to rededicate my life. Look, let me tell you something. If you've rededicated your life before, you know, God doesn't look down upon you when it's coming from the heart to say, I want to draw closer to the Lord. I want to draw closer to the Lord. Uh, Brother Brother Kamal, can you and your wife come here? And then uh, the Mitchells, if you all can come here. And the Daniels, if you all can come up here. Amen. If you raise your hand, you say, you know what, Pastor Shreese, I want to give my life to the Lord. I've never done so before. I want to rededicate my life. And then the third altar call is this. Those of you who are in a position where you say, you know what, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that when, when, uh, when those who were in the upper room received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power came upon them. They were able to live their lives unlike anybody else because the power of the Holy Spirit became activated when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so it's really simply, we're going to pray for you. Those of you who've never received before, some of you may have received, but you just haven't prayed in a long time and you can't get past a couple of words and you want that prayer language to flow fluently again we want to make sure we pray with you that a refreshing of the Holy Spirit will come and you will be able to fluently pray in the Spirit like you once did so again you not receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior you want to receive you want to draw closer to him and rededicate your life or you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit if that's you I just want you to raise your hand wherever you are so we can make sure that we pray for you for any of those appeals amen Like I said, I saw the one. Amen. I saw the one hand. Is there anybody else? Anybody else before we move on? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There are those of you who are online as well. Amen. And you may have raised your hand or you may have been witnessing your spirit for either one of those things. So we're going to pray a prayer of salvation and rededication. Amen. Amen. And if you raise your hand, you can just begin to make your way to the altar now. Amen. So that someone can pray for you in person. Amen. Praise God. But just repeat after me. Amen. Uh, and we're going to pray for those who are watching by way of, uh, of uh, streaming. Amen. Just say, Father. In Jesus' name, I thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. Now, Lord, I turn my life over to you and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. Make me, shape me, and mold me into the person you desire me to be. And Lord, I thank you. I now belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen, amen. You can pray, amen, with her. Give God a great big hand clap for praise.